everybody. Welcome to the Nicole's Review with ACMI. After a long haul of dealing with a lot of um, health issues, we are finally back, back in the studio. For those of you who are not familiar with my show or new to my show, this show brings leaders from all around a town and the community and the wider world and conversation about visions and existing affairs that impact our lives, our community lives, children lives, next generation to come. And without any further ado, let's welcome Peter Ali. We will be talking with my first guest, Peter Ali. And Peter Ali is a retired investigator. Peter Ali, welcome. Thank you for coming. It's my pleasure. Very nice to see you again, Pete. It's been many years. Yes. So, Pete, um, what happened to you, Peter? What happened to you and your family? Well, about five years ago, I had a, a heart issue, and they put a stent in. And then for the winter of 2000 into 2001, my wife at the time was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. We also both came down with COVID. While she was in hospice, I was admitted to the VA hospital. Approximately four days before she passed, I was discharged from the hospital and then readmitted three days later with COVID pneumonia. At least I got to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. And that's something for which I'm always grateful. Mm -hmm. After that, I spent about two months and really just kind of hanging by a thread. At that time, they did not want to, well, they were intubating everyone. Mm -hmm. And I was DNR, DNI. Were it not for a rather bright medical student who was familiar with the new procedure, mm -hmm. I would not have survived. Since then, I've been dealing with the symptoms of long COVID. That is getting out of breath, that is fatigue, and I have really had to struggle to get myself back to where I was before being ill. Are you still dealing with it as of today? Today, I'm enjoying a bout of good health. That's wonderful. Yeah. Pete, um, so what happened to your wife? Well, she had was, went for a normal physical in the beginning of December of 2000. Mm -hmm. 2000. And um, her labs came back a little unusual. They called her in for more tests. And by Friday of that week, she was diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer. I'm so, sorry. so unfortunately, it was, it's a type of cancer that you only discover by accident. Wow. And by the time you have any symptom whatsoever, and she had none, it's too late. Oh, Pete, I'm so sorry. Peter, um, share, share with the viewers um, what you believe in the society today. Once again, please. Today's society. Share, share with me what, what's, your, what's your thought on that. Well, I think we've lost a gift. I grew up in the 50s. And at that time, we dealt with each other one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. We dealt with each other personally, not through a screen. And we didn't suffer the influence of hundreds, perhaps thousands, of opinions mm -hmm. that are very shallow. We, we were given values head on. Mm -hmm. We were given values by experience. We learned to deal with the world as a human being and as an entity in the world. Mm -hmm. I think that's lost today. Yeah. I agree. 
Um, as a grandpa, Peter, I know you're a grandpa. Yes. Um, what would you say uh, the best philosophy of unparenting these days? Well, it seems today in today's society, to me, mm -hmm. children are protected from failure. You know, if there's some kind of a competition, everybody gets a prize. Mm. They, they're not taught how to deal with losing. It's too traumatic. Instead of losing and then re-examining and retraining and improving until you get it right, everyone's protected. So they're left with the impression that everything I did was just fine. Mm. And they don't gain anything by it. They don't grow. And I really try with my grandchildren to be honest with them, to be candid, to congratulate them when they succeed, mm -hmm. and to have a serious talk about why they fail. Because that is life. Yeah. It's a series of, well, winning challenges and losing some. Mm -hmm. And then it's teach them values. Um, what is the, um, another question, I'm so sorry. Now, how would you get people to compromise with new policies? Well, that's a very difficult question because there are so many influences in our politics. Unfortunately, money is a big one. Mm. And, um, there was a technique that I was taught a long time ago that if you're at odds with someone, you have to argue their point of view, which forces you to become familiar with how they're looking at things mm -hmm. and what they see, mm -hmm. because perspective is so important. And if you have the ability to see both sides, then you're more likely to make a compromise and be able to work together. You have to compromise with both sides. I agree. Well, you have to have a well-rounded perspective. Mm -hmm. Too often, we only see our own. It's like the example of two men that are facing each other, and in the middle of them is a figure, and it can either be a six or a nine. Right. They're both right. But without having the other person's perspective, exactly. they can't appreciate the other person's attitude. I understand that. Let's go back a little bit, Peter. Um, I know that you are a private investigator. Let's talk about that a little bit. Very little, please. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I did private investigations for a period of time. I did loss prevention mm -hmm. and also exec executive protection. Mm -hmm. And most of those required me to be a very neutral person. And my family has finally come out, or some distant parts of my family have finally come out saying, it's good to know you. Mm -hmm. Because I was so neutral, because for a large part of my life, it was my job to be invisible. So now at last I can be my foolish self. <laughs> so how's, how is it going since you retired? Well, the best example I can give is what I'm wearing today. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> it's, I, this is me about 35 pounds lighter than the last time I wore a suit. So unfortunately, when I got ready for today, mm -hmm. I realized the only thing that still fit were my ties. <laughs> so I've been wearing soft clothing, the comfy stuff mm -hmm. that you put in the wash, you put in the dryer, and then you put it in a big pile, and when you take it to put it on, mm -hmm. there are no wrinkles. Mm -hmm. So it's been years, literally years, since wow. I've worn a tie or and, a suit. Hey, everybody, he looks great. Yes. Let's give it up for Pete. You look wonderful. Thank, Thank you for you. dressing up for the Nicole's review. <laughs> this is such an honor. It's great. Uh, Peter, um, now I would like to know what would you think about children these days and does, instead of, do you think we have enough time to wait for children to make more mistakes? Or how, what would you do? How would you 
fix what how children are behaving these days? Well, I think the first thing I would probably do is limit screen time. Um, mm -hmm. It has its place, and it can be a great guide. Mm -hmm. It can be a great help. And even for myself, it's a very useful tool. But unfortunately, I think it gets to be too much of reality. Mm -hmm. That it's a false reality, it's a facade. I think there needs to be more one-on-one -on -one participation in sports, in discussions, mm -hmm. in talking, particularly in school. I think they should have more classroom discussions. Yes. So you can put out a point of view, bounce it off people, get their perspectives, but learn by actual association and contact. Especially nowadays, um, like you mentioned, screen time, and they spend a lot of time with the screen, not with each other. Now, what if they don't want to get engaged, go out and uh, engage with each other? How would you encourage, you know, children to go out well, and get engaged? I've learned one word, mm -hmm. and that's currency. You find out what's of value to them. Mm -hmm. And it may not be money. It, it might be their phone time. It might be any number of things. Mm -hmm. But you find out what they really care about. And you use that as your leverage to get the things done which they may not want to do, but might be good for them. So mm -hmm. I do that. Again, I, I've recommended that to my, my son and my daughter mm -hmm. for the grandkids. Currency. Learn what it is and use it judiciously. Yeah, and they use it as younger and younger age. Yeah. Even my grandson is two. He's already grabbing the phone from his mom. I know. I have to go to them for get tech savvy. <laughs> well, yes, I agree. We can learn from them, but there's a limit. Yes. There's a limit. Um, so what's your plan now, Pete? Um, for, your, for any big plans coming up for your retirement? I, I try to live each day to the fullest. And the last time we spoke, I was on a panel. And I got into this, my perceptions of organized religion versus the philosophy of different religions. Mm -hmm. And my religion is to be a good human being to try to interact with people in a wholesome, mm -hmm. nurturing way. And I've taken a look at all the primitive religions from different parts of the world and different continents, mm -hmm. and they all seem to have something in common, and that's harmony with nature and harmony with each other. All the rest seems to be creations of man mm -hmm. as opposed to our innate sense of what's right and wrong and how we need to live. We are decimating nature right now. And I fear it's going to be at our peril. Do you think we are at risk in America? I think the world is at risk. I think right now we are on the cusp of a, a great danger. I mean, there's already been a threat of nuclear retaliation. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be the step over the edge. I guess I'm most dismay dismayed by seeing something where one atrocity justifies another. And that's not the way for unity. That's not the way for peace. Mm. And I am very concerned. Now, what would you say about the Constitution? What's the primary of our Constitution? You know? Well, originally, it was to state our rights as individuals because we were coming out of a very strict government form, mm -hmm. the British, mm -hmm. and we fought them. And with our independence, 
We had to let people know that in this country they have rights. At this country, they will not be subjugated. And unfortunately, I also think that that's been somewhat distorted in time by our news media, which is particularly influenced by politics and money. So facts are kind of twisted to what the audience mm -hmm. wants to hear because therein lies the profit. Mm -hmm. Our value system is skewed. I agree. What would you, um, how would you help your community? I know we're all from different communities. How would you help your community engage? Well, and specifically, I'm not in politics, right. but I'm beginning to get very involved. I have a dog, Brady. He's a black lab mix. He's about 11 years old. And every day, weather permitting, we go to the dog park. Well, I've come to be one of the senior volunteers at the park. And now the park is going to be moved. So I'm coordinating with the city and the mayor hmm. as far as where the new park will be located, what facilities will be available. And I interact with the dogs for their affection and their candor. And I've developed a whole other family there. And um, that, that's how I contribute and am, am in, involved mm -hmm. in society. That's wonderful. And especially you, your wife passed away, you by yourself, you are engaging with communities, the different uh, activities, yep. and this is wonderful. Um, what's the next plan we have for the next year or so for that project? Boy, that's a hard one. <laughs> I think I'm so. at the point in my life right now where I'm not looking too far out, but concentrating on enjoying the day. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the moment, live the day to its fullest. I like that. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> wow, Peter. Um, it was wonderful having you, Peter. Thanks so much for having Peter, Ali, um, and our show, my first, my very first guest. Thanks so much for joining us today. I am Nicole Simaco. I'm the host. Thank you, ACMI. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.